I think like the number one thing is there are a lot of options and there's a, a lot of ways to get online. And it really is up to the entrepreneur to understand what they can, what they need and what they can devote to developing their online presence. Welcome. This is the Ag Engineering Podcast, where we talk tools, tips, and techniques to improve the sustainability of your farm. I am your host, Andy Chamberlain from the University of Vermont Extension, and this podcast is supported by Northeast SARE, providing grants and education to advance innovation in sustainable agriculture. We're trying to improve the industry by chatting with farmers and getting their input on tools, tips, or techniques that have changed the way they farm for good. Many of these practices affect multiple areas of the farm. Whether it be environmentally, emotionally, physically, or financially, we share the knowledge to promote sustainable agriculture, lifestyle, and business. Thanks for having a listen. Now, let's get started. Today's episode is with UVM Extension's agricultural business educator, Zach Smith. Zach, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Andy. Zach has 12 years experience in rural entrepreneurship and now teaches business education at UVM Extension. If you could just describe what you do in one sentence, what would you say? Um, it's supporting agricultural businesses in Vermont with one-on-one -on -one business development advice and counseling. Today, we wanted to talk about e-commerce platforms and the role they might play in uh, in the farm world. Right now, the world is going through COVID-19 in this pandemic, and a lot of farms have jumped to online sales as farmers markets have closed down and the restaurants have shut down. They need to find different ways to sell their produce. A lot of you have already implemented an online sales platform, but a lot of you also has season has not quite begun yet because it is early April. So today we wanted to talk about e-commerce and different software solutions that are available and things you should consider as you're thinking about moving online. So Zach, if you could just tell me a little bit about this, is it a software or is it platforms? Is it websites, online stores? Sure. Um, like, like you said, with everybody, what they're doing right now, they're really opening their eyes to the to the world of uh, e-commerce and trying to figure out how to get in, you know, how to get up and get started as soon as possible. Um, so a lot of people are looking directly at platforms. A lot of my, a lot of my experience comes in the business to consumer uh, field, uh, direct sales from the farm to uh, the end buyer. I'll focus primarily on that uh, right now, but I would also say that there is a lot of software out there um, that is that uh, or in groups that are trying to put together uh, almost like a virtual CSA type of uh, type of software um, and platform. And uh, that that would be a, an, another interesting topic to pick up in the future. But um, right now, just talking about uh, e-commerce platforms, uh, I'll go into a, a few of my suggestions of what I feel are, um, you know, are the easiest ways to get started. But I would also have to say that it doesn't start with the e-commerce platform. Um, it actually starts with you know, with the planning. Um, I feel that a lot of people, you know, it, it really helps that a person that someone goes and makes a makes a digital marketing plan as a business. Um, write out your goals, write out your capabilities, write out what you want to do, um, write out the audiences that you want to to reach and how you want to reach them and with what what type of offerings and promotions. Um, once you get that going, once you get a little bit of a planning uh, side going, then you can know where to start and uh, with uh, picking what what platform to choose. But I'd say I always like to say like the first thing to understand is that this is a there is a huge online ecosystem out there that involves websites, that involves your promotions, it involves social networking, advertising, email marketing, and I'll go over a few of those topics. Um, Getting started, I would say you gotta you gotta find out where your website is going to be hosted. I think that getting a website up and running and getting it hosted is very important. Um, you can go some platforms offer hosting. Um, other times, if you want to build your own website and have a little bit more creative uh, 
uh, license, you can you can get your own hosting and get your own domain. And I uh, right off the bat, I always suggest that people go to GoDaddy um, for hosting or for um, buying a, a domain. Uh, GoDaddy is is pretty good. It's the most popular hosting service out there, um, and uh, they have really great security measures that. Uh, which is something that you really, really do need to focus on, because unfortunately there are a lot of uh, people out there in in the uh, on the web that like to hack websites. Um, I've had several of my websites hacked in the past uh, for for no reason whatsoever, just to cause just to cause problems. Um, so GoDaddy is a really great resource for hosting and domain names. Another great re- resource for hosting that I've been using a lot lately is SiteGround. Um, SiteGround is uh, actually their their uh, their hosting is a little bit faster and cheaper than GoDaddy, and their customer service is outstanding. A little suggestion also with domain names is to make it unique and make it relevant to what you are doing, on uh, because that's what people are going to be typing when they're looking for you. They're going to be typing you know myfarm.com, you know xfarm.com, and so it's really important to stand out and uh, put your unique uh, proposition right in that domain name. So with with platforms, I would say that if you're w- wanting to get started, you can either go the route of uh, getting a WordPress site up. When you get a WordPress site up, that's, you know, GoDaddy and SiteGround actually have very, very great step-by-step instructions on how to get started. Um, so you can go that route, but, um, when you're building a, a website on its own, uh, there are a lot of components that are involved in getting started and getting it all together. That's why I actually, you know, in this case, um, if you want to get going as soon as possible, I would I would recommend using a platform like Shopify. Shopify has been around for a very long time, and it's the number one e-commerce platform in the world right now. Um, and there's a reason why they have absolutely excellent customer service. It's very easy to understand and that you can get going uh, very, 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 very quickly. I'd say within within a couple of days, ultimately, if the, the quickest, fastest way to get started and going is, uh, is Shopify. That was one of the questions I had was, uh, does somebody really need to be a programmer to set up a successful shop? Because I imagine uh, a lot of farmers don't want to spend hours on the computer. They want to spend hours in the high tunnel. And what what, <laughs> what do farmers need to know in order to set something up that's straightforward for somebody who's not in this uh, digital uh, website world? Right. Yeah, it, it, that's totally understandable. And, uh, and what I feel is that you're unfortunately – you're going to have to dedicate some upfront time to this. And, uh, and just understanding that, understanding that you're going to be confused here and there um, is just like a part of the a part of the process. So that like, so I encourage people to go with, um, go with something like a Shopify and there are other platforms out there, but I'm just really focusing on Shopify right now, just because I'm familiar with it. And um and I, I do believe that it's the best option, but um, they have the they have their customer service there for for situations like this. Um, I I would always encourage the farmer to understand that you're not alone in being confused and getting started. It's a it's a learning process. You 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 learn as you go, um, and uh, just yeah, keep that in mind. And there will be frustrations involved, um, but always go to that customer service. And then if you want to, you know, you know, have someone, you know, so, someone support you in your efforts, you know, take a look around at the younger, the younger crowd, the younger generation. Um, they are learning quite a bit in school. And I'm, I'm very, very surprised at how much that they're learning about website development and programming and putting stuff together. So, um, yeah, always you would be surprised that even in like the most rural communities, there are some there are some great young minds out there that can lend a hand. No matter no matter what their capabilities are on the on the computer, I say go for it. Uh, but just understand that there there will be some time that you're going to need to dedicate to this. Um, I would I normally say 
just to get everything up and running from planning to execution, it's probably going to take around 40 hours of your time. Um, but the good thing is, is you can break it up. <laughs> How did you learn about this digital space and online platforms? I, I learned about everything uh, basically out of necessity. I was uh, working for a small nonprofit in Guatemala in 2008, and we needed to get we needed to get a website going. So I talked to my mother, who was a computer science professor and information systems professor, who focused on coding and programming. Uh, and she sent me as much information as possible, and I you know, taught myself how to build websites. And then I realized that. Building a website wasn't enough, so you got to get into the you, you, you got to get into e-commerce e and uh, focusing on bringing in bringing in leads and uh, basically treating a website as a salesperson. Um, so I dove into the world of e-commerce. I started uh, I started a digital marketing department for a manufacturer. Ended up breaking off and starting up my own company, specifically focused on developing uh, online sales for uh, the startup, the, the sole proprietor, the craftsman entrepreneur types. And, you know, the craftsman entrepreneur is just someone who is so passionate about what they do on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, per personally and professionally. Often the, the lines are blurred between the professional life and personal life uh, with a craftsman entrepreneur. And um, I feel that the, the, anybody working in agriculture, you know, especially the farmer, is that type of crafts, craftsman entrepreneur. Um, and what I just, I'm inspired, I've always been inspired by what they do and what they produce. And, uh, the, the reason why I chose to get into that field of entrepreneurial development and digital entrepreneurial development with these, with this audience is because they are very, very limited on time and resources. And, um, but they're also the people that really do need that online presence the most, um, for, for a variety of reasons, not only just to increase sales, but it, to increase knowledge and understanding of what's going on in the agricultural world as in, as in comparison to uh, people living their day to day lives in non agricultural pursuits. Yeah, I'd, I agree. There's definitely a lot of, a lot of overlap and a craft in agriculture. Uh, I first started working on the online platforms, Joomla and WordPress, which were more like focused on websites and blogging. And then for sales, I focused on uh, the platforms of Shopify and big commerce. There are a lot more out there. There are plenty more platforms that some people prefer or have, have their preferences for, for other platforms, but I just found that these were the most reliable um, and they just keep getting better. Yeah, I uh, started working with Shopify in 2011 and, and also I worked with uh, Big Commerce in 2011. And back then I really was quite a neophyte and didn't really know too much, but I was able to uh, you know, work with, I was in, in the same position as entrepreneurs are, are in right now. And I just didn't know what to do, but I knew I had to, had to get my sales online for my stores, for, for my clients. So Shopify and Big Commerce led to uh, considerable success over the last nine years. In addition to your retail markets like farmers markets and restaurants literally closing their doors on you and this in change and happening within just a matter of a couple of days what's the purpose of an online store and what are some a uh, couple of reasons that somebody might consider setting one up well i've just I, I feel that the online store is is great for the for the agricultural entrepreneur here in vermont just because it allows that direct to consumer sale. And that's, uh, that's so important right now for a variety of different reasons. They're, they're losing some, a lot of their sales. And this way basically allows you, the entrepreneur to uh, basically put your destiny in your own hands. It, there, it levels the playing field for everybody, no matter if you're small or you're very large, you, you have the opportunity to make a sale in, in this d digital uh, space. So. Um, I feel even before this uh, pandemic experience happened, I've been subtly pushing uh, to get these Vermont farmers online and get their sales online because I feel that it it uh, it allows everybody to compete and it allows everybody to uh, have an opportunity to expand their businesses uh, in a sustainable manner. 
So if somebody wants to set up an online store, there's several options out there. We're using Shopify as an example. But out of the myriad of of applications to choose from, what are some key things that somebody should look for or search for when when deciding which platform to to go with? I think every every platform does a great job at explaining their their pricing. And, you know, and so they'll, they have that table, like a little matrix up on a pricing page of their websites and take a really good look at it. Look at all of the features. I mean, just really get a good understanding of the features that are uh, within the, the, their pricing tables. Um, the number one thing I would say is support. You have to get that 24 seven online support that you can call in or to check in, do a chat. Um, I think that's just really, really important. The second thing uh, that I would focus in on is your security. There is something called an SSL certificate that is very important because you're going to be processing payments online, and that is your responsibility to encrypt that the, your customers' uh, information, you know, credit card, etc., uh, because that is that is where um, a lot of the bad characters come into play. So make sure that you're, you, you're covered on the security um, and make sure that you really get an understanding of the terms of the contract that you're going, in, going to go into. Um, no matter what this is going to, no matter how you do it, it's going to cost some money. So understand what your, what your hosting fees are, um, what your processing fees are, um, and uh, that, that inclu- includes credit card processing and charges. If there's extra monthly fees, just have them really lay it out for you. So you get a, get a great understanding of that upfront. That's, those are the most important things. Secondary, I would, I would also look into, um, if they're going to support you with any type of shipping support, there's a lot of, there are a lot of platforms that will help you out and print, print shipping labels for you, um, hook you up with the post office or you know, UPS, et cetera. Um, so get a good explanation of what, what that platform can do for you. And then understand that you're going to have to use this website in some form of advertising. And so you want to know, like, and that usually means you're going to have to join the, uh, the social, social media uh, world. Um, so find out how easily it can integrate with what you can use on social media. I'm specifically talking about um, Facebook and Instagram and the ways that you can make sales through those uh, platforms. Um, a lot of e-commerce platforms will integrate seamlessly with your Facebook company page, and you can have actually the store on your Facebook company page. It's really important, and I think it's going to become even more important than in uh, in in the, the near future with the way that everything's going with uh, people avoiding shopping markets and, and, and you know closed farmers markets, etc. So. Um, get ready to bolster your, your social media presence and make sure that your e-commerce platform can integrate with it. How well do you think the success is of organic uh, customer growth via just Instagram and Facebook posts versus paid advertising? Well, I, 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 I feel um, that paid advertising is necessary. And I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll just kind of talk a little bit about that. What I, I like to talk about are like, are five different areas of where traffic gets into your, goes to your site. Direct traffic is when someone types your, your name in into their browser, like www.myfarm.com. Um, direct traffic is, it comes from people already knowing your, your business. Um, it's someone who's familiar with you and it's something that you should, uh, you should be tracking. Um, all of these forms of traffic are come as default channels when you, when you uh, implement Google Analytics on your website, which is something that I, it, it's, it's, a, I, it's pretty much a requirement. If you're going to have a website, you better have Google Analytics on your website. And that allows you just to, to, to check, you know, where your traffic is coming from. And it really helps you measure the health of your website. Um, so direct traffic is, you know, people who are already familiar that are coming back um, or people that perhaps you met at a farmer's market or you, uh, you know, did some offline propaganda or advertising and they came to your website from that. So social traffic that you just were talking about, um, it is important or 
uh, social traffic is very, very important and you can pay for it or you can pay for, you know, regular paid traffic through, through Google, Google ads, et cetera. Google ads are pretty, um, that paid advertising through Google, it, it can get a little complicated, even though it really looks pretty simple. Uh, I would say to get started or get familiar with advertising, I would say to stick to Facebook and Instagram's advertising uh, platforms. They're just very, very easy to do. And I would say just start off with like $100 and really just see what happens with it. And when I say see what happens with it, there's a, there are a lot of things that you can do to tweak your advertising to make sure it's relevant to your, to your markets. Uh, what I mean by that is you can target people by age groups, by interests, by affinities, and you can also target people with geo geo targeting, where you can down to the zip code. You can you can uh, focus your advertisements to reach people that are within your your neck of the woods or just areas that you want to focus on. Um, I know some maple syrup producers that that focus on you know that focus on California sometimes just because they want to ship. You know, the Vermont brand all the way out to California. Um, so understand that it, there is a learning curve with with paid advertising. It's really important. Uh, but, you know, just start small and find your efficiencies and build upon them. And as you are doing that, you are increasing uh, traffic to your website. And then you, you talked about organic traffic. Organic traffic is extremely important. And some people will hear the word uh, pretty soon, they'll hear search engine optimization. Um, all of the search engines uh, uh, have basically, they go out and they index websites. Uh, and that in that way, they websites show up in search results. So I'll just you know focus on, on Google, for example, uh, since it's so large. But um, Google has uh, basically uh, search engine results from anybody typing in, you know, anything, uh, we're all familiar with that. But what's really important for a website uh, in order to build their organic traffic is to have a very healthy website, which I mean healthy meaning that the, none of the pages are down or broken or they don't have, that you have to have all very good links on your website. When I say good links, it means it's going to other websites or internally within uh, other pages within your website that aren't broken. Um, but then also a very, very important thing to do is make sure that Google is indexing your website through its search engine console. Uh, what that means is basically, and some platforms will do, do this for you, and other times you have to do this manually, but you got to make sure that Google is indexing your website and going through your website. And it basically takes all the keywords that are in your pages and makes them searchable through their search engines. Um, it's really, really important and it takes a long time to develop, but it's very valuable. When you're getting first getting started, your organic traffic is going to be very low. But if you're following uh, careful search engine optimization habits and, and good tactics, uh, within three months, your, your organic traffic is going to start building and up, building up, and it actually becomes exponential because Google likes to promote good websites. Google loves to, you know, look at the health of your website and uh, see how long people are spending on it, how many pages they're viewing, and they'll promote a healthy website. And uh, I see it all the time. So really focusing on search, search engine optimization helps not in the short term, but in the long run, it's very valuable. It's a, it's a must. So we've talked about a couple of things to get traffic to your website, as well as, you know, tapping into your existing customer base. Uh, are there other things that, that farmers should think about? You know, Otherwise, you're just going to build this website and, and customers come in addition to search engine traffic and people that already know about you. How do you get customers? What, what I would say is uh, uh, the most important part of actually of digital marketing is email marketing. Um, and that's something that, that people kind of forget about, but um, it's a very, very, it's the most valuable uh, form of traffic that you, you can have to your website. Uh, when I say the most valuable, it's basically when I, when professionals like myself look at, and when we're doing our analysis of sites, um, we look at conversion rates and a conversion rate is when someone comes to the website and completes something that we want. They, they complete a goal that we establish. And the majority of the goals that we're talking about in e-commerce are sales. So you can directly link 
your sale to what form of traffic came into your website through Google Analytics and other and other platforms uh, as well. So what we found is that email marketing traffic has the highest conversion rates. So something that it should it should be a part of every online or digital marketing plan is, a, is an email marketing plan. Um, and what I mean by that is it's really, it's just great to get new sales from people that, that from leads and then also increase uh, your repeat, your repeat customers. Um, a lot of people will go online and it's basically the way the online world is, is there, there's a ton of competition out there. So people aren't going to go and usually a lot of people will not go to a website and make that purchase right on their first visit to a website. Go check out the website and go check out some others um, and some other businesses. Um, the best thing to do is to integrate a way to get people to sign up for email subscriptions. Um, and all of these platforms have, have options to do that. And what you do with those subscriptions is um, you just start an emailing process of introducing, uh, uh, introducing valuable, valuable content to these, to these subscribers. What I mean by valuable content is just keep them in mind, keep what their needs are in mind, keep what they're thinking in mind and, and talk to those needs, you know, and then talk about your company, talk about what you have for sale, announce sales, give discounts. You can do all of that through these, uh, through these platforms. Yeah. So I definitely get into the email marketing side of things. Um, some platforms have email marketing integrated into it. Other platforms do not. Um, some valuable, some really, really easy to learn and easy to use email marketing platforms are uh, Constant Contact, uh, MailChimp, um, but I actually uh, really prefer actually use integrating uh, customer resource management uh, CRM into my uh, programming, and uh, I use uh, HubSpot. When you, when you have your website running, when you're getting ready to go uh, and in getting ready to bolster your business. I say, look into email marketing and look into something in HubSpot, HubSpot, MailChimp, Constant Contact. They're all going to be able to help you to increase those sales. A lot of farms do have a website set up and they do have an email management software for their CSA or their newsletter already for their existing customer base. Uh, do you have any uh, recommendations for software for CSA management for somebody who's thinking about uh, expanding and getting into that online sector? It's not, I'm not very well versed on this topic, but I have noticed a few out there and they're being shared within the, the extension communities. And I think uh, Harvey, Farmigo, Barn to Door, uh, I really like those. Um, I, I like those three. I've checked those out. Um, I'm pretty impressed with all of those. Um, another one that I've uh, that I've actually had contact with, and actually intervie I interviewed and worked a little bit, you know, collaborated a little bit virtually with, is the the founders of Gray's Cart. Um, they're very interesting. It's a it's a it's a company out of Northern Indiana, but uh, they they work with nearly 300 uh, farms around the, the nation, and they started out. They were just selling beef online. Um, and then they just expanded. I think their cousin built, like, graduated from University of Chicago, and built the whole platform, you know, uniquely for uh, their business. It's 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 made it's meant it's specifically for farmers. And uh, I was really impressed with the presentation, but I have not implemented. It. I haven't I haven't implemented any uh, form of CSA or um, so. I, I wouldn't be the, the the best resource for that. Yeah. So what what's a typical cost that somebody can expect to uh, both upfront and ongoing costs of an online store? Upfront, I would say that you, you're you probably going to um, spend around $200 just to get everything going. Uh, and then keeping, keeping it maintained on a monthly basis, you're going to spend, well, I'd say, to be fair, about $30 to $80. A month. Before we started this conversation, you said the number one thing that you want people to understand is that setting up an online presence takes both time and resources. And there's a lot of different options to get online. And it's up to the user to decide really what they need. Yeah, um, I, I, I definitely would say that, you know, the, the biggest thing is to take some time, um, understand that it's not going to be an overnight process. 
it's it's going to take some time. It's going to be confusing. You know, it's not going to just the the website's not going to make itself, and your products aren't going to sell themselves. So there is going to be some effort involved, and it's going to be confusing in the beginning. the The upfront patience and diligence is going to pay off in the long run. And uh, yeah, that's just having that knowledge and having that uh, you know having that expectation is really important. So that wraps up my questions that I had for you today. But is there anything else that you wanted to share that I didn't ask? Uh, no, uh, it's a lot of the service providers in the state and you know, us at uh, UVM Extension are working very, very hard to develop um, more resources for farmers. So this is just the beginning. Um, this is a, a new reality for all of us. And uh, we are working very diligently across different departments and extension to uh, to provide more in, information for for our farmers and uh, we're doing we're we're doing as much as we can and, 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 and as fast as we can and we're looking forward to um, sharing this with uh, our agricultural community and uh, yeah expect much more from us yeah we just scratched the surface on a lot of things really just overviewing uh, this area but if people want to dive in to more resources that are available where can they find those? Um, we, we are putting them together right now. What I would say is, uh, contact me, me personally by email. Um, I'm very responsive by email and, uh, I will be able to put together individually, uh, respond to everybody. But, uh, what we, what we're going to want to do is start, um, start an email service with updating people on more and more resources that we're offering and what we suggest they should follow. And so I would highly encourage them to reach out to me at Zachary.m as in Michael dot Smith at UVM dot edu. Perfect. Putting that uh, email marketing to use right there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, thanks for sharing all this uh, intro knowledge to ho- hopefully help get a lot of farmers off the ground and onto the web. Uh, I think it'll be really helpful for a lot of people. So uh, thanks for giving me some of your time and coming onto the show. Thank you, Andy. Thank you for listening to today's episode. I hope you go ahead and subscribe, share this with a friend, or leave us a comment. And if you want more information, check out the show notes on our website at agengpodcast.com. That's A-G-E-N-G-P-O-D-C-A-S-T dot com. Thanks for listening. I hope you have a great day. The proceeding has been a production of University of Vermont Extension. For more information on Extension, log on to www.uvm.edu extension.